Living the abundant life is different than knowing about it. And it's time to begin practicing the life we were made for. This quote just hit. It's by Mark Beeson. So true. Simply knowing what I'm sharing with you in this new special series, Rewired for Wealth. Today's part two, The Father Money Wound. And on Monday, the previous episode is The Mother Money Wound. It's important knowing we need that is a step. But simply taking in this information and not putting it into action or active manifesting or active healing isn't going to change anything. So I, I want to make sure I say that because a lot of you get stuck in being the forever student. I'm going to learn more. I'm going to research more. I'm going to consume more. I'm going to get another certificate, another credential, another thing. And it, it's a trick your brain's playing on you to make you think like you're taking action, but what you're really doing is hiding behind being the student versus actually putting what you've learned into true, scary, terrifying, uncomfortable action. So you don't really need more information. You need implementation of that information. And we're going to get to the action of things in part two today. What up, my people, my posse, my fellow crazies? It's your host, Tiffany Carter. And this is the show that is going to help you grow your business, your bank account, that big, beautiful brain of yours, your abundance, your relationships, and everything in between. This is part two. We are going to be diving in to the father money wounds today. And I want to remind you, it's not one or the other. Oh, I have mother money wounds or I have father money wounds. You can easily have a combination of both. I simply want you to take note as I'm going through the symptoms and the identifiers. And there's plenty of other symptoms. I'm focusing on the main ones that I've seen in coaching over 150,000 people worldwide that are the most um, prevalent and just notice in your body, which ones are, are you going? Oh my God, that is a main one of mine. Okay. We can't tend to all wounds at once. It's called triage for a reason, right? So you're being rolled into the ER and you've got your foot's barely hanging on, but you've got a laceration on your forehead. You've got you know, a collapsed lung, like they have to make an assessment of which thing to tackle first based upon which one has the highest consequences. So I want you to take a look at which one do you know reads as such a, has such a strong hold over you that holds you back, that you see how it's costing you so much and having the business you want, the money you want, the freedom you want, the joy you want, the options that you want in life. And those are the ones that you are going to focus on tending to and healing to first, because to try to heal all the things at once, you'll short circuit. It's a lot of energy. And as you're healing stuff, it goes in waves. You might have an emotional hangover from some things. You might notice that you start avoiding things. You might want to dissociate and start scrolling, binge watching a show, shopping, eating, because it's just too much for your brain to focus on at a time. So please go slow and steady with yourself. You can absolutely heal these money wounds very quickly. Okay. I have many people who even have just watched one of my TikTok videos and I've noticed a major difference in two days just from one video. So you can have those shifts that quickly just by the fact we're bringing these buried wounds to the surface so you know where they're coming from and it releases a lot of shame around them and it starts connecting the dots for you. So you stop being so damn mean to yourself about the ways you do things, the way you think about things. And now you'll at least have clarity on where you need to focus your attention 
on healing this stuff versus being in that purgatory of not knowing what the hell your problem is and why you're stuck and why you take three steps forward, five steps back and what the hell is going on and why are my manifestations not happening and it must be me and you have no idea what it is. Think of all that energy and time you've spent obsessing over that and then imagine that being gone. You're already going to have more energy and feel better just from that alone. So let's drop into it. Oh, I'm like, oh, there's something important I need to tell you. There's only 48 hours left to join Selling with Soul cart closes, period. Will not open again until 2025. This program of mine is for you if you are wanting to make a crap ton of money online and you just putting a course out there, you just putting a service out there, even if you already are successful, like a realtor or web designer or what permanent makeup, whatever it is, you're already successful in a brick and mortar or when you have clients that you've met in real life, that's wonderful. And you're wanting to generate cash and clients online 24 seven, you want to be getting payment notifications all day long, ping, 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 pong, pong, pong. You want to have that happen because now you're just stacking cash upon cash upon cash because you have multiple revenue streams. And this is what gives you the freedom to maybe not take as many clients in your service-based business, be more selective, be able to take a three-week trip to Italy if you so choose, um, you to be able to take an entire summer off and just focus on having your passive products, your online products and, and programs and digital courses, et cetera, making money for you. But you just creating these things and having them on there, even if they look amazing and even if they're cute and even if you know the information in there is great, None of that shit matters if you do not know how to strategically package and present and price your offers so that your ideal client can't resist them. That's called marketing. And if you don't know how to do it in this modern way, in the way that is not sleazy, is not pushy, is not annoying, is not manipulative, using my emotional-based sales techniques so that it feels good to you, and feels good to your ideal client, you're not going to make consistent sales. You're going to spend all this time and effort and money. And time is something that we can't get back. You're going to spend all of that, even on ads, all these things. I see people do it all the time. Then they come to me and go, oh my God, Tiffany, I've spent this on ads. I hired a marketing agency. I did this. Nothing is working. This is the skill. There's a reason you get a certificate of completion at the end. People put this stuff on their LinkedIn, okay? This is the technique in order for you to be able to have people quickly find you, develop trust with you, like you, respect you, then buy from you. And this can happen in a very short period of time. Some of you are listening to this podcast episode from one video you saw on TikTok or one post that you saw on Instagram. And maybe you've already bought something for me. And those are my exact techniques I'm teaching you. It's not a game. It's, it's, there's no trickery to it. It's the opposite. It's actually being straight up, high integrity and sincere and emotionally connecting and compelling with your specific ideal client. And that's all taught in Selling with Soul. So oh, there's payment plans, all the things. It might already be sold out by the time I'm uh, releasing this episode. So if you go to press join on the page, projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash selling with soul links in the show notes, you can swipe up. It's also in the description on YouTube and in my bios on Instagram and TikTok. Then you can get put on the wait list for 2025. Just know we cannot add any more spots. We already added more spots because we technically sold out in 48 hours. So I found a way 
to be able to still serve you at our premium high level as we do over here at Project Me by adding more spots, but we can't add anymore. So don't say I didn't warn you. And there's always people that come in and go, I didn't see that this was ending, blah, 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 blah. Austin, I'm a procrastinator too, but there's been enough warnings, okay? And I love you and just stop fucking around. And you can only have that conversation with yourself. Stop fucking around. Make a move that is going to make you money. And that that's called an investment. And this is a tax deduction. And no, I'm not an accountant, but this is an income generating activity for you to know how to market your business and sell your services. Without marketing and selling your services, your products, your business, your brand, I'm going to tell you something. You don't have a business. That's the, that's one of the first questions you would be asked on the shark tank is what is your, you know, what's your marketing plan? How are you acquiring customers? And if it's, oh, I just do some posts and I tell some, tell people about it. And sometimes I run ads and I send an email. Uh, that is not a plan. That is called from your ass and you're going to get from your ass cash. And I don't want that for you. All right. We're going into it. Top father money wounds. Number one, financial control issues. So if you have a tendency to really assert a lot of control, want to micromanage money in yourself, in your partner, with your kids, you are like, you're, you do spreadsheets, you want to budget you're really like always looking for the best deal. You're like, you want to save here. You want to save there. You get so in the weeds before making an investment, whether it's buying a car or getting solar panels for your house, or even like joining one of my programs, you get so taught in the, but what if this, but what about this? I want to guarantee this. It's like, you're looking for such certainty because you have such a tight grip on yourself financially. Like you might even encourage a friend of yours to go get a massage or, you know, do something for themselves, nice for themselves. But when it comes to you, you won't spend money on things like that. That is being like frivolous. So you just are wound really, really tight around money. Now this stems from having a um, father who was very dominant or strict in your childhood. So you were controlled in childhood. You felt trapped. You were overly controlled. Maybe your friends got to stay out later. Maybe they were able to date and you weren't, or they were able to get their earrings pierced or wore certain clothes and you were kept under such tight guard that being controlled and confined and even trapped is so familiar to you that you now do it to yourself in when it comes to money because money is our main currency, right? You know, I mean, obviously love is too, but money is a main currency. So if you are um, controlling yourself with money, you're actually controlling your entire life and everyone around you in it. Mm -hmm. Next one, risk aversion. You avoid taking financial risk due to the fear of um, facing disappointment, failure, ridicule, what will other people think? What will other people say? You're like very fixated on it. I don't, I know Tiffany talks about how important it is to do face to camera videos and show your face on, on social media but I, you have such a risk, you don't want to do it. It's all, what will they think? It's not really strangers. It's family members. It's your own kids. It's people maybe you work with or used to work with. And you're wanting this level of certainty. You're constantly seeking like, I need to know for a fact this is going to pay off. Hi. <laughs> we have people standing and watching again. If you're looking at me on YouTube right now, you will see like I am totally bright red and like, I don't know, I'm I'm actually like a shy person. It's like you can, I used to think shy meant you were insecure. I get now that it's not because I'm not insecure. 
I, I have some probably insecurities, mostly body stuff, but I'm not an insecure person, but I am shy and I'm like, I'm pretty red right now. <laughs> and I'm like, mm, don't watch me, which is so weird because millions of people listen to me and millions of people watch me online. But when they're like right there in my face while I'm broadcasting, it's weird anyway. So this risk aversion, you start going down this wild path of wanting certainty. Like maybe you're wanting to um, join Selling with Soul or wanting to go into my posse membership. And you're like, but I've done other things before and I didn't finish them or I've done other things and they didn't work. And I've already spent money on this other thing. And then what if this and what if that and what if it doesn't apply to me? And da -ba -da 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 you can talk yourself out of ev out of everything in many areas of your life, because guess what? There is no fucking guarantee. There is no guarantee. The only guarantee I can give you is that if you don't do anything, you will stay exactly where you're at. Now, where does this risk aversion come from? It is likely coming from a father figure who was risk adverse himself. Very conservative father, very, a penny pincher. My dad was a cheap ass. Where it was like, we can't afford that. We need to be prudent with our money. Or maybe you grew up in like middle class or even upper middle class, but like the way that, that your father ran money was very like miserly, you know, like, you know, that's not in our budget and was very like, we can only take this one trip a year is always looking for a deal would even make comments maybe around other family members, friends, neighbors, people in the community, even like public figures putting down these other people for taking a risk. Can you believe they're letting their, their son or daughter not go to college? That is a terrible thing to do. You have to go to college, you know? And so using that kind of language and even that energy in your house has taught you as a kid that it's very dangerous to take risks. Bad things can happen. You want to avoid risk at all costs, but you avoid risks at all costs. You don't have a gain. You actually end up, the risk is in not taking the risk. You end up in your own self-imposed prison. And I'm sure your father, none of this is meant to like bash anyone's parent. Your father probably learned that from, from his father. And it could be multi-generational, could be ancestral. They learned that from, from somewhere. They picked that up and they doing the best that they could. They maybe never explored any of this stuff. And what we don't explore ends up getting exposed right? It just ends up, it'll just end up evolving and it continues to have this money noise and money wounds passed in a bundle for generations and generations. So if you're a parent, you have an opportunity right now to change this. Even if you feel like, God, I've already have passed this bundle. That doesn't mean you can't take that bundle back. You absolutely can. Next one. Difficulty trusting authority. So struggling to trust financial advice, business advice, authority figures, always being like super skeptical of people who have abundance, where it's kind of like rich people are evil. You've got to step on people to get to the top. Really top business people are ruthless. And so you're seeing these people as bad and someone who has some kind of prestige or a leadership type position, there's this distrust and almost like, okay, what's the catch? What's the catch with this? Like, what's going on here? And I'm not saying there isn't some part of that that's good to be discerning, right? Discernment is a wonderful thing. But when you discredit everyone right from the beginning, how could you possibly be able to take in and apply that wisdom, right? Like if you're sitting there discrediting me and coming up with things about things of, of, oh, well, you know, she's this, so she probably this and making up stories and all sorts of stuff, like making up nonsense, like, oh, she probably has a trust fund or she probably ha was married and has, gets alimony from an ex or 
she probably just knew the right people. I mean, people come up, we all do it, make up a lot of stories about somebody with no fact-based information. And it's actually a form of protection. It stems from this difficulty trusting authority. Where does this come from? It comes from the fact that you couldn't trust your father. Not even saying your father's like a pathological liar, but his actions and words didn't match. Maybe he was an addict. Maybe he was a drinker, a gambler. Maybe he was a cheater. Okay. Maybe he made a lot of promises to you or the family, but then didn't follow through on those promises. Maybe you grew up in a household where sometimes you guys were cash flush and sometimes there was nothing. So there was a lot of inconsistency in the environment. Maybe your father's mood was very inconsistent. And that's supposed to be that like pillar of safety and protection in the home. So even if it's like your dad was moody as hell, and you couldn't predict those moods, and there was instability there, this would also create this difficulty trusting authority, which ends up as a money wound, because in order for us to be able to start businesses, grow businesses, evolve, have great success in life, we can't do this alone. We need to learn from mentors, invest in coaches, you know, teachers, like, This is how we pay it forward. But if you always have your hand up or you always are like skeptical, you're not able to really take in that wisdom and apply it. Because if you don't truly believe something, why would you apply it? I have to really buy in and believe something for me to take the energy and time to apply it, right? The next one, competitiveness and comparison. If you're constantly comparing yourself to others, feeling the need to see where you're at, gauge where you're at. I'm thinner than, I'm prettier than, I'm making more money than, oh, I have more people who bought my stuff. I have more followers, less followers. You're looking outside yourself to gauge where you stand in your business, in your looks, in your relationships, in your life. And if you feel like you are kind of ahead you can kind of get a high off it. And if you feel like you're behind and everyone else is like doing better than you, you can end up in a depression and a funk over that. And you do the doom scrolling. You're even studying people like me, studying other people online, trying to reverse engineer what they're doing in your industry because they seem to be successful and you want what they have. And so you try to like study them and kind of mimic or emulate what they do and reverse engineer it. And then it doesn't work for you. And then you wonder what's wrong with you. And then you're comparing against them. And, or maybe you're looking back at people like from Facebook, like people from college or high school or people you started a career with or people who started businesses around the same time. And you're like, oh my God, this person's so much further ahead of me. Oh my God, they already have two kids in this beautiful home. And you're, and you are just, it's, it's compet unhealthy competition is really what comparison is. There are some of you who are naturally competitive. There's healthy competition, right? You see this with athletes, you know, that's healthy competition. We're wanting to win. We're wanting to be the best at our craft. We're wanting to be the best. Like I have, I have healthy competition, but it's within myself. Um, not looking at others to dictate where I rank on the meter. Now, this is one of mine, this comparison. And I have something I need to say right now that is for some of you is going to really shook at you. Because my mother was my primary parent, my parents were divorced. So she's a single mom. Well, not really single because there's men coming and going at all times, but you know what I mean. Predominantly spent the time with her. I, my mom had a lot of masculine energy and traits, especially as a narcissist. And so my, this comparisonitis thing that I've done a lot of work around even though I'm talking about it under the father, the father wound for me, it showed up through my mother. So if you had a very domineering mother, a narcissistic mother, you were raised even by a super strong powerhouse type mom or a mom that like 
just because of circumstances had to take on the role of mom and dad some of these father wounds can show up in the form of the mother and vice versa just know that so where this shows up with this comparison and competitiveness is you were influenced by your father's emphasis on competition or comparison you know the line like keeping up with the joneses oh can you believe mark down the street like they put in that fence that must have cost them twenty thousand dollars even that is comparison you had a father that did that within the family why can't you be more like your brother maybe you were the black sheep even though i was an only child i i always knew i was different and I know a lot of you who listen to this show resonate with me. And I shared this in, in my Project Me Posse business coaching membership in our live training this last Friday. And, and it seemed like mostly everyone who was in there agreed. It's like, we all knew there was something different about us. Most of us though, as children make it to where something's wrong with us, but there were other people in there. It was so validating for me to see it that thought that they were adopted. I did too. I thought I had to be adopted. I'm so different. And I knew I was different and I felt different and there was no one to really, you know, talk to about it. So those of you who knew you were different and there was no one to talk to about it, you likely internalized that. And you had a father that was always pointing out different things about other people, right? It could be with someone's weight, how they look. It could be, can you believe Douglas and, and his wife aren't making their kid go to college or that they're allowing him to pursue, they're allowing their son to pursue art. Like you can't make money doing that. And also not even in the negative, praising one sibling over another and really praising, oh, you, you know, he got all A's again. She got all A's again. Oh, she's, she got made varsity again. Even talking, father talking about people at work, people who always seem to get the promotion, the kiss ass, stuff like that. So that teaches you as a kid that you don't know where you stand. You're trying to gauge outside of yourself where you stand at all times. You know, people like knowing where they stand with people who they're close to. And when you're a kid and you are, your survival is based on your parents, right? And so you're looking to gauge where you stand. Am I in good graces? Am I in the good zone? Am I making this person happy? Am I where I'm supposed to be? And you're constantly trying to gauge it and it can feel like a moving target especially if you're someone who knows you're different in some way and so it's like you never quite hit the target but you're still trying to find the target because when in your kid's mind right which still is inside you today that target's like the holy grail that that target is where you get the love and the acceptance and the nurturing that we all want and that we all crave and being told I'm proud of you and, and all of that and being acknowledged and being seen. So you were taught this, this is a survival skill that you're still acting out today unconsciously. Even though I know, you know, you doom scroll and you do that. It runs so much deeper than that. It's not you just being like a masochist and like, wanting to make yourself feel like crap. You're just reenacting what was so familiar and programmed in childhood of seeking, um, looking externally to um, self-identify. And the real thing is, is that we have to validate ourselves and assess ourselves internally. It's the opposite of these things. But now that you're seeing some of these main traits. Now, the fact that you're aware of these, you're like, this makes so much sense. Why I operate this way, why I do this, that already takes the edge off of it. And then starting to heal it is taking a look at, hmm, you know, out of curiosity, did my father pick this up from his father? Looking at those circumstances, right? Having self compassion and grace for how you pick that up and how you kept going about your life in this way, because you didn't know that you had these money wounds maybe until now. 
and you're hearing about it now because now's the time for you to to work on it. Otherwise, you wouldn't be hearing this episode, right? You're supposed to hear it. It's 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 time to heal these things and take a look at these things, and take a look at what you know what actually is the truth. What's what is the abundant version of the story? So if you even go through being afraid of risk, you know, constantly looking for certainty. The truth, and I shared a little bit earlier, is there is there is no guarantee. And it is scary. And there's no way to wait until it's not scary. You'll be waiting and you'll be dead. It's always scary, right? That's why when you keep going for things and some things don't pay off and some things do, but you have to have some things not pay off in order to get closer to the things that do. Just like in dating, you have to date, you know, what is it? You got to kiss the frogs to get to the prince. It's no different when it comes into business and money. You know, I had to lose all that money that I busted my ass for. I, ha I had to lose that in order to uh, gain it all back and then some and be able to have an entire platform teaching you my two decades of money healing and money making skills and talents and research and implementation like that had to happen it wasn't cute didn't like it had to happen you have other areas of your life that you can look back and go that sucked, but that, that did have to happen. You cannot get away in this life without being unscathed. And yes, it would be nice if we could, you know, protect ourselves for that. And some of you are, you're, you are operating in such, you put yourself in such a protective box, you know, out of these protective mechanisms, you learn to survive in childhood. And now you've boxed yourself in and you've boxed out all the abundance, all of it. And if you were happy with your box and what's inside this little box you've created, that's great. I'm happy for you, but I know you're not because that's not abundance when you're boxed in. And in order to experience the beautiful abundance that life has to offer, the joy, the freedom, the money, the experiences, the travel, the riches, being able to share your gifts and help people and get paid well for it, you've got to let yourself out of this box. And that simply happens one day at a time as you now allow these wounds to be exposed and these wounds to start healing. So pick, pick the ones that are the most prominent and we're doing triage. You're not going to tackle all of them at once. I'd love to know which you identify with more. Is it father wounds, mother wounds? If you want to share, that'd be great. You can DM me on Instagram at Project Me with Tiffany. I would love it if you shared this episode with someone who you know geeks out on this stuff and will really appreciate it. That would be incredible. And you have 48 hours left to come into selling with soul, you know, and if you are at a spot where you're, you're done zigzagging and throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks in your business, and you want to do something in a different way and an abundant way, and you want my guidance and you're willing and open to do things differently, this is your move. This is it. And if it is full, when you go to press join, the page will say so. And then you will be waitlisted for 2025. I only run this program once a year. And I hope to see you in my class of 2024. Wishing you the best health, wealth, and worth as always. Love you so much.